The alliance of throne and altar is also another crucial component of Rothbard's historical outlook. I, I, I really enjoy teaching this to my own students and explaining its relevance to today. The alliance of throne and altar is this, the, basically this, uh, this connection or the relationship between the leader of the government, uh, such as the king, and a court intellectual, such as the priest. So back in the day, in order for the uh, king to justify his various actions to the public, he would enlist priests and other sort of um, uh, religious uh, uh, intellectuals to say, well, the king is divine. The king's words uh, are, you know, are directly from God. In order to save yourself, you have to listen to the king. You have to be conscripted by him. You have to pay taxes, whatever, blah, 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 blah. We don't have that overt religious emphasis anymore, but we still have the very similar principle where court intellectuals now, they might not be a priest, but they're going to be a political scientist or an economist who's going to say, well, you have to listen to our uh, government, uh, you know, you have to listen to your government rulers because their policies are going to increase GDP and it's going to make people better off or it's going to reduce income inequality or it will save the environment or something like that. Or they might be a public health expert declaring themselves to be the embodiment of science, like yes, uh, the good Dr. Exactly. Pa, you know, they're saying, well, you have to listen to me. Um, yeah, I, I have, you know, I am the one uh, basically, uh, you know, voice in the in scientific discourse and et cetera. And uh, why do they argue this? Why are so many intellectuals attached to the system? Well, it's very related to uh, the point that Rothbard uh, makes that I find very true. It's that, well, intellectuals are supportive of this in the same way that they're cr critical of capitalism because they know that capitalism won't really provide a demand for their services. So instead, they're going to justify state intervention because the state will turn around and scratch their back. The king would set aside tax money to build a new church for the priest. Nowadays, we employ various intellectuals, academics, economists, political scientists, historians, policy wonks, whatever, at state universities, at large endowed think tanks, in the government, and so on, right? So they're able to justify uh, their own employment when they support various interventions.